section of legislators led by Garissa Town MP Eden Duale think a parliamentary uh, bipartisan approach like the IPPG of the 90s could be a solution to the BBI stalemate since time might bar its implementation. Sawa, mimi nimeomba bunge la Kenya viongozi wa chama zote chama kubwa kama ODM Jubilee chama ndogo kama Kanu Raipa wote tushirikiane kwa sababu katiba ya Kenya inakubali mabadiliko ya katiba kupitia bunge na kupitia kwa wananchi we must welcome all suggestions from right thinking resources. Mimi naona sio mambo baya. Wakiniuliza nitawasaidia vile inawezekana. Let them not bring BPI back to parliament. Parliament has been captured by the state. Nandi Senator Cheryl Gay is opposed to BBI going back to Parliament. Raila Odinga has also insisted that BBI is a people-driven process and should not be decided by MPs. But is the Parliament route a way out of this deadlock, whether <coughs> given that we have tight timelines to August 22nd? Actually, that is the easiest, the fastest way. Mm -hmm. All they need to do, I think people like Colonel Raila do not want it because there are some things they have to drop. Like the constituencies that they have allocated uh, to their friends, the friendly regions, that has to be dropped. But uh, dealing with the question of winner takes it all, where various communities, if you lose, you feel you're like you're outside. Mm -hmm. When you are invited, you are invited like a visitor. Here, Honorable Uru Kenyatta won with William Samueruto. In the first uh, Uhuru one, three quarters of cabinet came from Kalenji no Kikuyu. Uh, there was one law and I think uh, one one here mm -hmm. and then they chose also not even the, the, the core, they chose periphery, their friends so the community feels left out, now this has to be dealt with, that is why you have to bring either another position and another so that somebody who is also number two is not left out there uh, peeing outside there and mobilizing people <laughs> and uh, <laughs> inflaming people's minds the, it can come into parliament as opposition leader. Mm -hmm. So this has to be dealt with. Then the question of uh, minimum funding for uh, uh, devolution. Now that again is a popular thing. It can be put. Just about two or three issues can be crystallized, passed through parliament and taken to the front. How do you do it? Talk, include Honorable Raila Molodinga, include Honorable William Samuel Ruto, include Musalia Mudavadi, include uh, Kalonzo Musioka, and President Uru. If you include these guys, mm -hmm. then you add the faiths, churches and mosques and these leaders, you put them. You have the country, we are moving. Mm -hmm. But you ignore Ruto, he will be peeing outside. You ignore the church, they will be outside. You ignore the civil society, they will be in court. You, you, you attack the judiciary, you can't move. It is consensus building quickly. We can do it. It can be done, but it requires sacrifices. It requires them to bury their ego. Honorable Ella has his ego. The president has his ego. Suju has his ego. Honorable Ruta has ego. They bury, they come together and say, no, we know that this winner takes it all has a problem. It is also good to increase funding of the counties. These two or three things we can deal with. Let us move on. One of the things they have to drop. Is this thing against the judiciary called judicial ombudsman? It really unites the judiciary against BBI. They, they, they want to love it, some want to like it, they look at it, they are like, but they say, who you? So, this, is, this can be done. What those parliamentarians are saying is very good. The other ones, if they cling to BBI, even if you are to win in the Court of Appeal, they are still the Supreme Court. You will have to do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And that work for it to do, to work, there must be cherry picking of judges and there must be reproachment between the president and the judiciary. Call to Secretary General uh, Francis Atwoli also has a twist. He says IPPG is a waste of time since the Court of Appeal will annul the High Court ruling. <coughs> Post that caucus and they must rethink and consult why the issues of IPPG has been overtaken by events because BBI we popularized it 44 count assemblies approved it. It cannot go back to Parliament. We are moving to Court of Appeal and I'm 100% sure that the Court of Appeal will annul the ruling of the High Court. Whether you often dismiss Francis Atoli, but he claims to have the experience and uh, to be able to predict how Kenyan politics takes shape, 
Is he right on this one? But I, I've been here telling you the court will nullify the BBI. How many times have I said it? <laughs> for, for almost two years. And I told you on the other hand, we are moving. And I can't say, there's a problem here. They can't see it. So it is, you know, it is a high, high position to be a prophet. Mm -hmm. That's why even religious leaders, they prophesy. I, I prophesy for you, Julie. You <laughs> will be MD, KBC, and you feel nice when they tell you you have to go through the valley of the shadow of death <laughs> first. Then you are like that prophecy is from the devil. <laughs> so, be uh, it can work, but the, that those hard positions that are being advised by the likes of a tool, my, my big brother Tuoli, that's where the problem is. How when they are saying they are so sure. Well, by the time the bench is set, I can tell you. If I was here, I would tell you, Julie, this one. <laughs> Let them go to hell. But there's still the Court of Appeal. Then there is still the Supreme Court. They may not dismiss or accept the, 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 the appeal. They may just delay. <laughs> Say, okay, well, let, let's do it. We will do it in, in, uh, in September. <laughs> that, again, is a problem. So le, le, let's not underrate the judges. We underrated the judges, and I remember even in 2017, I said there's a problem in the Supreme Court over the presidential election, and I was asked why. I said, when the Deputy Chief Justice asked about the service, and an order was made to go and open this service, then the next day we went back to court and the service had not been opened, I could see on her face, she had made up her mind. You could see it. She made up her mind. Julie, if you have made up your mind to love me, I can see it on your face. <laughs> and if you have made up your mind that I'm an idiot, I can also see it. You don't have to say it. So when we keep on saying, I'm sure, we are sure, we are sure, even the judges who are giving it 50 50 may say, okay, all right, sour, let's see. And then they say, decision, two months. Then they are after. <laughs> Too much. That's what is unwell. So that's what is what. Uh, we have seen these things before. Let them do an initiative that will work. What is that initiative? Let them stop threatening, insulting the judiciary. They can also follow another route. Against this backdrop of the BBI weather, the former Prime Minister has spoken about the 2022 general election, saying in a radio interview in Kisumu that, and I quote, this region will not come out of the 2022 elections empty-handed. Let us register as voters now, end of quote. How did you interpret those comments from Rai Laudinga? Uh, those are his usual talks. Uh, you know, to, to shove up support and to ward off uh, <coughs> wisdom. Who always comes. See, you have them saying, Who can bog us? Nobody can talk, break, and at that time, break is talked. <laughs> and when you say no, let's use wisdom. Proverbs 4 7 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Of all you are getting, get understand. God Himself talking, not how many people support you. Yes, the region will not be left behind. We want a united country where, after elections, things are shared equitably mm -hmm. uh i hope that it did not mean that if he gets the law people get it should be that after elections even if he doesn't get other laws can also get and we it will be deemed they have gotten but that in my view is a statement meant for the base and uh, it is good for the base but also it sends in wrong signals what he needs now is strategy other than strategy, he needs God. The final giver of the city in this country, the presidency, I have seen from the last, from the days of Moi, in fact, from the days of Kenyatta, it is like, at that tip, it is God who tells you. They always say, oh, Jeremiah, Jomo was in jail, and, and whatever, whatever, and people said, you can take presidency, <clears throat> and then release Jomo. God sent Jeremiah to say, hold on, <laughs> we are waiting for him. He came out. Now, he put Jeremogi, his second, in command, and Jeremogi could clearly see that Mze is old. He's time. Ordinarily, he'll go ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Jeremogi walked away from him. He picked in uh, Murumbi, also he walked away. Then he picked in uh, uh, the son of Sacho, mm -hmm. uh, Daniel. Then he came in and said, I will, since I didn't even know I would be vice president, 
Mimi sit down now, but see no, no evil, hear no evil. He sat there, I think 11 or 13 years. Then one day, one day, Mze passes on, and another person says, I'm told the story says, Mahiu and the rest said, get ready, we are going to slay you. Maybe he didn't believe it, until after being sworn in. And even when he swore, he was sworn, he had not prepared, he said, I will follow Nyaya Yakanyata. And then people understood, he said, oh, he will be as tough as uh, Jomo. Mm -hmm. And they started towing the line. That's how he became president. Then Kibaki, at the, the lowest moment, he became president. Then Uhuru, when now Moi tried to push him, he couldn't get it. But now when he had hate, he had whatever, whatever, that's when he became president. Now, even Honorable Ayer, if he wants, let him know that there's a tip where Jehovah is the one that tells you. Not, not Tialala, not Tibi, not where Anbogam. The launch of these huge projects in Nyanza by the president has been viewed as political by some in the DP's camp, but the president says these projects will outlive him and Raila and secure the future, the region's future. Yangu, nana mkushukuru kwa sababu, alia, munaona kazi, hee, ndiyo hapo, 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 hee. Na kazi hiyo imewezekana kwa sababu tunasimama pamoja. Na kutoka wakati ambapo tulisema ya kwamba tutaunganisha wa Kenya. Dugu yangu wamesimama kidete, tumesaidiana, na tutaendelea kusaidiana. Hata tukiangalia siku za usoni, tutakuwa tukiangalia pamoja, na ndiyo wa Kenya wawe kitu kimoja. Last week, you were dismissive of these legacy projects, Reda, but the truth is that for generations, Nyanza has not witnessed such as a flurry of mega projects being launched by the highest office in the land. You know, I love my president, so what makes him popular mm -hmm. makes me happy. But let me tell you, <laughs> some of the major projects, like the roads, the, the whatever, were initiated by the Quebec administration uh, and started off, and they've been going on. The other major mega projects that we thought would be done is the standard gauge railway from Mombasa all the way to Kusumu. Now they have done the old railway which has been there, which was run down. And uh, you launched that. Uh, then uh, the port is good, should have been there, it mm -hmm. continues. And a few others. But you know, you can highlight things so that uh, uh, Honor Brella has ability to say, handshake is working. But me who goes around the country, if President Uru was to launch the projects in central province, there would be riots in this country. Because I know them, I see them. The people would, would, would kill each other because they are mega. So we appreciate when the government is working. We appreciate when things work well. We appreciate because the president has tried. Uh, but let's not over politicize. Let us not handshake nice <laughs> these projects. <laughs> Incidentally, when it was also in Kisumu that the president praised the role of the Kenya Defense Forces in accomplishing civilian tasks and criticized those who have opposed the use of the military in these projects. <laughs> Look at what is going on. This was a lost case. I only wish our civilians who we give jobs in parastatos, in ministries, would just do a quarter of what our brothers and sisters are. Well, uh, those who, like the president, argue that KDF simply does the job better than other Kenyans have failed to do, the military will complete the job on time and on budget. So what is wrong with that? Uh, <clears throat> nobody is saying anything is wrong with it, but there are several implications. First of all, the military has a specific role to deal with mm -hmm. that they should be good at. We are just lucky that uh, we have not got, gotten into war. Apart from doing the work, the civilian work, these are what oils the economy. You expand the economy through investment, through business. When a business person invests in manpower, invests in uh, knowledge, invests in uh, equipment, 
that is how you create employment. If you are going to do all our roads through the military, these other people are going to be idle there. Those who steal, they are the ones who appoint them. They appoint the wrong people after they have stolen, then they say the civilians. No. You must understand that the countries that have grown, the ones that we emulate, the ones that are successful, Singapore, younger than us, they are not using the military. They are allowing the thrift of business. They are allowing job creation. Mm -hmm. They are allowing... So if every work was, will be done by military, then what about Julio and Jiku? How are you going to earn your daily bread? <laughs> Please. So it is good to think like that. But that is not economics thinking. That is communist thinking, which has not helped. The Chinese who are working here and building a road, they are not military. Mm -hmm. They are just businessmen and women who have capital, who have skill, who have equipment, and they have chosen to work with discipline and virtue. There are many Kenyans who can work with discipline and virtue. We have a man called Matiang here. We have Magoa here. They are there. People like where they are here. So you choose your friend or somebody from the village, somebody from home. He goes and does a poor job. Then you say civilians. That is wrong. Away from that. Even, 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 even um, what do you call it? Medical treatment. We don't tell to the military. The mili when things are thick, they come to the civilians. So last Thursday, national leaders from the president, uh, his deputy speakers of both houses and legislators <coughs> were at their most humble during the annual national prayer breakfast. The keynote speaker was your uh, learned colleague, Peter yes. Wayaki, who spoke about the shattered dreams of a nation. Unfortunately, who fear their best times are behind them, and this is a tragedy. It seems far-fetched to agree with the psalmist when he says in Psalm 16, Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely, I have a delightful inheritance. Many times we feel you know, despondence and despair, like those words are written for a world very far from ours, and for a people not like us, but while many people watching that prayer breakfast weather and hearing those remarks would be asking if this is more than just an annual ritual that we hold every year to say all the right things without actually changing our behaviors and attitudes. Yoli uh, Wayake spoke very well. Mm -hmm. Wayake was one year ahead of me in the university. <coughs> He's married to my classmates. So we have been, we, our time, we, we are known. We, we, we are in a big breed. But what he spoke is right. What he spoke is correct. And uh, one thing you know is that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, mm -hmm. the word of God. Some of these people, you have to tell them, tell them again, tell them again and again and again and again. It sinks slowly. So the fact that we have the ritual, at least we can say prayer breakfast. We are way ahead <laughs> of some people who don't even think about prayer. Second, the fact that the president can sit there and the deputy and there's somebody telling them in the face, that is progress. Mm -hmm. The fact that they come out and also pretend, although we know they didn't want even to sit together with the deputy and the president, they pretend that is good enough. There are some people who have been dragged to church. They, 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 they were dropping people in church. Eh? They were going dropping. Then they say, sit and wait. Then they get... Um, saved they get uh, to god so the fact that the prayer breakfast is there is good enough secondly now we would want those who listen listen and take it to heart otherwise the record is they were told they continue to be told they have heard if they have not followed we will report them to god and god is the one who gives leadership and he deposes people and uh, finally, whether to end the conversation, let's talk about the end of the Ndile uh, era. One of the most colorful politicians of the last two decades, former Kibwezi West MP Kalembe Ndile, passed on at 57 last Sunday. The son of Squatter went from being a Chakobana and highway robber to become a member of parliament. He will be remembered for always speaking his mind. Hello. 
na ukutane na mnyama ambao ana mguu kama ya mbuzi akikimbia wewe usiongojee hata wewe kimbia mambo ya kusema ati sijasoma yes, sio big issue kwangu lakini nani anajua juu kama kuna hata ma degree anauzo kwa street sasa hata nikienda ngambo sinakuja na hand somebody will be in charge of the ministry as if we are not in charge if the same can't vote things will keep holding apart ndio amelewa amelewa nikienda mbinguni niulizwe wao walifanya nini duniani namwambia Mungu nilipeana maskota kuna mahali kunaitwa kalembera Does Kalembe remind you of other Kenyans of modest education like the Mulumutisias of this world who have overcome the odds to attain high standing in society? Thank you. May I pass my uh, salutation mm -hmm. to Kalembe Dile. He's also my neighbor in uh, Siokumau. Mm -hmm. He's a great man. I, I think he's one of the people who has led robust lives. I remember him is called Tip Tip Mani Kenya. <laughs> yes. Tip Tip Mani Kenya. He's a man who went back to school. He has written, written a book. He was very forthright. He was very um, uh, clear and focused on what he was. He's the kind of a leader you'd say from where he rose from to where he reached by the time he was existing. He, existed. he has poured himself out like a drink offering. What, 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 what? Uh, Paul was saying that I have been poured out like drink offering. Mm -hmm. So that even if you write in his, uh, the eulogy paper, you write and said he lived the good fight, he fought the good fight, he finished the race. There is justification, not like many people. You say he fought the, the, the good fight, but you say what fight? <laughs> so we celebrate people like um, Kalem Bendele is a great man. He has done what would show other Kenyans that it is possible. Wherever you are, Whatever station in life, whatever your education, whatever your color, your creed, you can rise. Because the one who makes you move forward, advance, is the king of kings, Jehovah. You can kick these other people. And he was able to do it and we celebrate him. He will be remembered for many years, I'm sure. And I hope he died in Christ so that when the king of kings comes back, he will meet and he will be asked, which crown do we give you? There are some people who go to heaven. But they'll be crownless. They'll be in the crowd. Because there are about seven crowns that will be given according to your work. So Julie, make sure that if you die in Christ, you will not be in the crowd. You will be in the leadership. There where occasionally you meet Jesus, you eat and you make decisions. Those who are sitting in the in the those who are sleeping in the seventh quarter, those who are sleeping. we celebrate him. Thank you very much Renda, for your time on the show. It's always a pleasure hosting our regular analyst, advocate of the High Court of Kenya, published author of books on the legal profession, mentor and canon in the Anglican Church, Ambrose Weda.